Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video I'm going to take a look at how I would approach painting an army of Craftworld Mimiara. Now these guys appeared in a couple of Imperial Armour books from Forgeworld, they've got a really striking scheme, and I've had a bunch of people ask how would I approach it. Well, like this. Let's paint. We'll start off over a black primer with a very simple zenithal highlight. So I'm using Tamiya Flat White here, uh, and I've thinned it about four parts thinner to paint, and the thinner is Tamiya X20A thinner. Important we use that thinner with Tamiya paints because these are a solvent-based acrylic. That does mean that they're excellent through the airbrush, especially for this application, because we can thin them down loads, still maintain their control, and over black we can create tons of different greys through to white. Very simple zenith, all this means is I'm sort of spraying more or less from top down, slightly angled, uh, so that higher up the model uh, facing the light will be brighter, that facing away will be darker. For the first colour, uh, I think I did about four, five, four or five testers for this scheme. I found it really tricky to get a, a sort of green that I was happy with. Uh, in the end I settled for Pro Acryl uh, Green, uh, excitingly named, but it's a lovely colour and I'm definitely going to be using it on a couple of upcoming projects. I'm spraying this straight over the pre-shade. Uh, thin layers, I've probably thinned this two drops of thinner to paint and I'm just using normal airbrush thinner now. So any of the brands that you're familiar with, I know Vallejo, uh, MIG, Medea, anything like that is absolutely fine. And I'm going to cover... I'm using a couple of the uh, colour plates as reference for this scheme. Uh, so I'm going to cover probably four-fifths of the model. Uh, it's basically just the top top bit of the model that we're going to do blue. Um, but I also noticed that the top of the arms were blue as well. Uh, so I'm trying to leave those. Now the reason we're going to do the green first is because the blue is a much, much stronger paint. So once we're happy with where we're at with the green, we can go in with the blue. For this, I've used heavily thinned Talisar Blue contrast paint. I just said blue is a very, very powerful paint, so it covers very, very well, and it covers over other colours very, very easily as well. So I thin this about three or four drops of thinner to paint, and I'm going to slowly build up the layers. You can see, normally when you're spraying contrast, you get the colour in, in one or two shots. So by thinning it down, we can control it a little and make sure that it's nice and light. And then as I work down the model, it's very, very easy to blend in. When we're using the airbrush to blend the colours together, it's always going to be a lot easier blending a dark colour over a lighter colour. This is simply due to the, the way we work with the airbrush, which is effectively glazing. So it's, it's many, many layers of, of very, very translucent paint. The obvious example would be, you know, uh, like a dark brown over a yellow. It'd be a lot easier to blend the brown over the yellow than it would be to try and lighten up the brown by spraying yellow over it. For the heads, uh, they're nice and plain actually. I quite like the fact that they're black and white, uh, quite neutral. It uh, doesn't take away from that striking initial scheme. So first up for the grill, uh, I'm going to base coat it with uh, any grey you like. I've used uh, dark sea grey here, really doesn't matter. And I'm going to highlight it using Tamiya Flat White. All we're doing is just spraying in the centre of the face plate, and we're going to use the fact that it curves away from us to create a little bit of shading. So obviously the spray coming out of the airbrush can't hit those sides because they're not facing towards it, so you naturally get this nice little gradient. Now just like the other Eldar in this series, we're going to use a liquid mask, so a liquid latex. This isn't actually the uh, My Miara head, as you can tell, um, but the demonstration is exactly the same. So use a little cocktail stick, put a drop of the uh, latex on there and just quite quickly manipulate it around. You've probably got about 20 to 30 seconds before it starts to harden, starts to cure. And then if you're still fiddling with it, you're going to sort of create little gaps. Um, That's actually something I ended up doing on the Mimiara head, which we'll come to in a little bit so you can see what that looks like. But it goes on like this and then once it's cured, I don't know, 30 minutes to an hour, it'll go pretty see-through like you can see here. And that's when we can spray over our next colour. Now I'm using model colour black, uh, just use whatever airbrush black that you like. And to highlight it up, I'm going to use the same grey that I shaded the white with, so dark sea grey in this case. And again, more or less straight on, a couple of thin layers. I've thinned this maybe three drops of thinner to paint. 
Again, because it's Tamiya, I'm using X28 thinner. And again, we're using the fact that the helmet curves away from this coat of paint coming out of the airbrush and therefore creates that nice transition. So once that's all dry, I'm going to use a cocktail stick to peel away. And I aim into the eye lens here so that if I do scratch paint at all, it's not going to damage any paint that I'm not later going to paint over. Now I thought about redoing this because I messed it up a bit, but it's quite useful I think to see uh, when things don't quite go to plan. So you can see as I've peeled it off on the right hand side of his face, you can see these little marks. And that's simply where when I was applying the liquid latex, I was dabbing too much and it was curing and I was pulling it off as I was mucking around. For me, I like battle damaging my miniatures, so that sort of thing doesn't really bother me. I know I can weather it out later on in the process. Now I'm going to give the whole model, including the head, which is obviously off, off screen, a couple of coats of gloss varnish. This is simply to reduce the surface tension on the model and mean that the next stage that we do, the pin washing, is easier to apply. For the colour, I'm going to pick a, a nice dark blue. This is Midnight Blue by Abtalung 502, um, but if you pick other brands of oil paints, they'll nearly always have a colour called Prussian Blue. That would work great. Um, this is another good example of just how strong a colour uh, blue is. So we're adding in a little bit of mineral spirits. I like to use uh, artist grade odourless mineral spirits uh, and I prefer to use Winsor & Newton Sandstore. So we just thin it down into a wash consistency. You can see even with just half of that tiny sort of dot of paint how strong that colour is already. And then I load up a brush with a nice point on it because I want to be quite accurate. Just start to work around and you'll see that capillary action just sucks that paint into all the recesses and gives us a nice little bit of shading. I waited for this to dry for, I don't know, about an hour and then I reapplied it in certain areas just to make it a little bit darker. But I love the way the green and the blue blend into each other. You notice as well when I was airbrushing earlier, I actually, I wasn't overly careful if I got a little bit of the blue over the green. I think it gives a nice little bit of nuance to it. So it's dried for about an hour, then I popped the hair dryer on it I think it's come out, I, I really like how this has come out, I was very very pleased with it. Uh, it's pretty full on this scheme, it's pretty in your face. Um, now I wanted to knock everything back a little and just uh, harmonise all of those different finishes we got on the model. So I'm using an ultra matte varnish here, um, but you use whatever you like, a gloss, a satin, a matte, an ultra matte. Um, I like the finish that ultra matte gives us. Now once that was dry, I like to go in and do a little bit of chipping on the model. All I've done here, it's a little bit more complicated than I've done it on other models. On, on most models, I'll just add a little bit of off-white into my highlight colour and I'll use that to chip with. For this, that wasn't quite right, so I had uh, an off-white on my palette. I think it was light blue grey, something like that. And then I mixed in a tiny dot of the green and a tiny dot of the blue until I found a sort of colour I was happy with. And I'm just going in and you see I'm just sort of tapping along the edges. So it's sort of edge highlighting, sort of chipping, sort of neither. Uh, but the nice thing is it's really not difficult. It's quite relaxing to do and I love the effect it gives. I would advocate always practicing this on a bit of the model that doesn't matter. Uh, and when you see the spinning of the 360 image later, <clears throat> I think you'll spot, uh, <laughs> spot where I was practicing trying to get that color right. These Eldar models are a, a very nice model to practice this technique on because they've got a lot of edges, but also I feel you have to try and be quite accurate with it because uh, if you're not careful, you're going to get it on other areas of the model. Uh, for the basic details, I've just blacked them in, as you can see, and then done a little bit of grey chipping along the edges of those. Um, the gems on my Miara are purple, uh, which is really nice. Uh, so all I've done is base coated it with a uh, hex lichen, a very, very dark purple. And now I'm going to paint in a sort of crescent of about a third of the gem. Uh, for this I'm using Pro Acryl Purple, but any sort of violet colour that you like, go for it. Uh, Zarius Purple is it by Games Workshop? That would have worked well. But I had the Pro Acryl box out because I was finding the green earlier. Uh, if you find that you make that little highlight crescent too broad, it's very easy just to go in with your darker colour and nudge up against it and make it a little bit sharper. So don't be afraid to work backwards and forwards. It's not, you know, it's not a one-shot deal with these things. 
and then the opposite corners of the crescent we do a little white reflection dot nice simple gem i like to pop a bit of gloss varnish on my gems when i finish as well uh, although this is the head from the all three tutorial um, the process is exactly the same uh, so we would paint a purple the dark purple so hex lichen into the eye lens then we would do our highlight using our violet and for this i would just follow the shape so sort of triangle a little line of that along the bottom and then again the opposite corner to where you've done that little white dot for the reflection Now, as I said before, I painted the other details in black. I like this, and then all I tend to do is give the black a brown oil wash, just to give it a little bit more interest. Um, some of the weapons I've seen on my Miara stuff are white, uh, so like the D cannons and things like that. It looks great. For that, I would use exactly the same recipe I used for the faceplate on the helmet, uh, and if I was brush painting it, I would do the same again. I, I would use something like... Um, I don't know, Mechanica standard grey, and then something like Ulthwang grey over the top, and that will give me my uh, my white, and I could just do a little bit of tippy-tappy chipping with, uh, with a normal white paint. It was at this stage as well, uh, although I think the armor's really cool, it is very, very full-on, a bit too much for my taste, so I wanted to add a little bit more sort of grunge to it, grunge and grime, just to make it more to my taste. Uh, so I've gone in with my brown oil wash here. I'm using sepia here, but any brown you've got will be fine just adding a little bit of it here and there and as you can see just knocks it back a little makes him a bit dirtier and with that the guardians done they come together so fast once you've got that armor uh, put together um, you know if anything painting the gems takes almost as long as, as painting the rest of the model um, but i really like that you could knock out an army of these so fast and i think it would look fabulous uh, on the tabletop now this is the last in the Craftworld series, the Army Painting Craftworld series, where I've tried to take a really efficient, simple approach uh, to getting what I think will be very striking effects uh, for your gaming miniatures. So not too much time, but really pleasing results. You'll notice that Sam Han uh, hasn't been done. That's because Andy's going to be doing an upcoming uh, series of tutorials uh, or, or videos uh, on his own army project for them. So providing he covers the scheme in that, it'll be all good if he doesn't. I'll pop out a midweek video or something with a Simon Hand scheme as well. So if you've watched all of the uh, Craftful videos so far, thanks ever so much for sticking with me. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to painting something other than Eldar now, although they have been a real joy to uh, to play around on. Thanks ever so much for all the comments uh, and the feedback. I've really appreciated it. It's, it's been a really fun few weeks working on these guys. I'm looking forward to showing you all what I've been up to in the meantime. So you know the usual. Like if you liked it. Comment if you've got any questions and subscribe if you aren't to make sure you don't miss out on any further content from us. Thanks a lot for your support and I'll see you next time.